Hi everybody, welcome back to our kitchen here at Little Spoon Farm. If you are new, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Today we are going to make a delicious soft sourdough sandwich bread. This recipe, I'm not sure why I have not put this on my site up until now because everybody wants a good sandwich bread. This one is so soft, it is so easy to slice, and trust me, you're never gonna need another recipe for sandwich bread again after you try this one. There's just a few little steps that you need to take. We're gonna put it in the stand mixer, let it do all the work, there's no kneading, and you can let this rise overnight and bake it the next day, and trust me, you're gonna love it. So let's go ahead and get started. You're gonna to wanna to feed your starter before you make this so it's nice and bubbly. I like to do it the night before I'm gonna mix my dough. Um, and that way the starter rises slowly overnight. This dough is so easy to make. We are going to start out with the bowl of a stand mixer. So I'm gonna measure out 275 grams of water. I cannot stress enough, if you are going to make sourdough, you really need to get a kitchen scale. It's gonna make your life so much easier. Go ahead and tear that scale out and we're gonna put 50 grams of active sourdough starter in here. I like to kind of stir it around in the water. That helps the sourdough starter to dissolve into the water and I feel like it just makes it more evenly distributed in the, the dough. Doesn't have to be completely dissolved, but just, you know, go ahead and give that a good stir. Okay, now we are gonna add four tablespoons of oil. I'm using olive oil, which is 60 grams. This is what's gonna make the sourdough bread like really, really soft. I don't usually put oil in just my regular sourdough, doesn't really need it, but for sandwich bread, it does make a big difference. We're gonna put 10 grams of salt. And a tablespoon of sweetener. I, I like to use honey. Um, I'm out of honey right now, so I'm gonna use maple syrup. So a tablespoon is uh, 15 milligrams. Just need a touch of that. Give this one more stir. And then all we have to do is add the flour. So that is going to be 500 grams. This is all purpose flour. This is central milling flour, and I believe it's like 11.5% protein or gluten, whatever, and it's just a really good all-purpose flour. I get this from Azor Standard. I get really big bags of it. It costs a lot less if you do it that way. Just keep it in five-gallon buckets with a gamma lid, and it's really easy to get out that way. If you bake a lot, definitely want to buy your flour in bulk. Okay, so that is 500 grams. I'm going to use this really stiff spatula to get this all mixed together. I like to do it this way instead of using the stand mixer on this step because I feel like I can get everything really, really good and mixed. You're really just trying to get the flour to get in there. We're gonna let this rest after this step for an hour. And that's gonna let that dough hydrate. It looks pretty dry right now, but trust me, it's, uh, when we go to mix it, you'll see it'll, it'll have um, absorbed all that liquid. And it'll kind of change the texture and of the dough. So I'm just getting it with my hands. I'm just working it 
a little bit. I'm not kneading it. I'm literally just trying to get all those little dry bits on the bottom of the bowl to stick to each other. So it should look, you should be able to pick it up. See, there's barely any dry bits down there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this up. I love using these little silicone reusable things. I'm gonna cover that up and let it rest for one hour. The dough has rested for an hour. And now we are going to let the stand mixer do all the work for us. So the dough kind of looks like that. And when it's done, it's gonna be smooth and silky. So I'm gonna put, I put the dough hook attachment on there and then I'm gonna put it on speed between two and four, which is three. And we're gonna let that run for seven to eight minutes or so, something like that. see that the the dough has changed consistency quite a bit it's no longer that shaggy mess it's a little sticky but not terrible so just work it off of the the dough hook I'm gonna take this off let's move this out of the way I love my new stand mixer. Had to get the yellow for a little spoon. Okay, so that's what the dough looks like. And I like to use this, uh, it's a very flexible bowl scraper and just kind of scrape down anything that's on the side. You're going to cover this up and you're going to let this sit on your counter for until it doubles. Now I'm going to show you a little trick that I use to let me know when the dough has risen enough. Take a small glass. This one just happens to have markings on it. It's an anchor hocking. You just get it at any store. A rubber band and then something to cover this up. You can use plastic, it doesn't matter. But what I do is I take about 50 grams, you don't have to measure it out, but I just pull some of the dough and let it just drop into the bottom. Now that that's in the bottom, I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of press it down into the bottom of this jar. And I am trying to get all the little air pockets out on the side. You might have to wet your fingers a little bit to where it doesn't stick too much. But after I get there, that in there, I put a rubber band where the top of the dough is. So right here it says one ounce. So that's this marker right here. So basically, I know that when the dough rises to the two ounce mark, that it has doubled in size and it's ready for me to shape. So what I do is I just put this right alongside the dough and I let it ferment together. And when I see that it's risen up, that's when I know it's ready. Okay, so this dough has been rising all night and you can see, so here it is in the bowl. If you can see that but I took that little piece of dough out and now you can see that it's doubled and this is a really really good way that you can tell how much your dough has risen so um, let's go ahead and prepare the pan now you can use a regular nine by five or eight by four and a half I think it is eight by four pan but I just love using my Pullman pan. This makes a really good bread loaf. It has a top that 
you can use to cover it while it's rising. Um, it is not stick, but you want to go ahead and either coat this with butter or I have a little bit of cooking spray. And then I also like to put a piece of parchment. So I've cut out a piece of parchment and this is going to help us to lift the bread out after it bakes. So I'm just going to set this aside and I got a little bit of oil on there. So let me just get that up. Okay, so now it's time to shape this loaf. So I'm going to take a little bit of flour and put it on the surface, not too much. We're going to turn this dough out. This dough is so soft and so supple. It's so much fun to work with. I love it. Okay, and don't forget to take this little bit of dough out of the uh, glass if you use this little trick. Sometimes I forget to do that. Okay. All right, so we are going to press this out into a rectangular shape. Again, this dough is just, oh, I just love working with it. It shouldn't be too sticky at all. It should be super, super easy to work with. And so one of my readers asked me how big of a rectangle to press this out into. So what I said is I would, you know, kind of do what I regularly do and then actually measure it. So that looks about right. So I'm going to get this tape measure and kind of measure how wide it is. So it's 11 by 15. Doesn't have to be exact, but we are going to shape this for the loaf pan. So basically you just want to take one side and roll it over to the middle. Do the same thing with the other side. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. See how it kind of messed up? Don't worry about that. Okay, and now we're just going to roll this towards yourself. And what I like to do is just cup it and I'm kind of tight forming a tight skin on the outside just like we would with our artisan loaves. Okay. And then I like to kind of pinch the ends to make sure that they're they're sealed. Okay. And then we're just going to take our Oh, let me see. I want to make sure you can see this. Take a bench scraper to help you lift this up off the the counter and put it inside of the loaf pan. Okay? And that's what it's going to look like and it almost looks like it's not big enough, but what it's going to happen is as this sits and rises for the next few hours, it will spread out and it'll rise in the pan. So, with the Pullman pan, like I said, it has this little cover and I'll just do that backwards. You just slide it on. So I'm holding that parchment paper down. Just slide that on. And then I'm going to let this rise until it's double. I mean, not, not double, till it is at the top of the rim of this Pullman pan. If you are using the uh, regular bread pan, you're going to want the dough to rise about an inch over the rim of the pan okay so to the top of that um so that'll take a few hours maybe two to three um so i will be back when it's ready to put in the oven the dough has been rising for about two and a half hours and i have preheated the oven to 450 degrees I'm going to go ahead and put this dough in the oven and then I'm going to immediately turn the oven down to 375 
and bake for 45 minutes. Oh, this looks perfect. So because I have this little parchment paper, I can just use it like a sling to lift that up and then just put it oof, hot, 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 put it right on the cooling rack. Okay, let that cool a couple hours so that when you cut into it, it's not gummy and it'll be perfect. This bread has been cooling for about an hour. It's still a little bit warm, but I'm gonna go ahead and slice right into it so you can see the crumb on this. And this is, I mean, look at that. Isn't that perfect? It is so soft. It's amazing. So because it's warm, I'm gonna go ahead and slice one and put some butter on it and just go ahead and give it a try. There's nothing like soft bread, warm still from the oven with some melted butter on it. I mean, this is like next level. Mm. Oh my gosh, so good. I like to store my sourdough at room temperature like I'm from, I don't know where that was from. <laughs> Sorry, room temperature. Okay, take two. I like to store sourdough bread at room temperature for a day or two. Um, Typically, I'll put it in a uh, bread bag or a beeswax wrap or even a plastic bag if, or like a silicone bag, something like that, at, and just leave it at room temperature. After that, I like to freeze it. So I would suggest that you cut the sourdough into slices and put it into the freezer that way in a freezer safe container. And that way you can pull out individual slices when you need it. And it basically stays good for up to three months. And it, it literally tastes like you just baked it um, when you pull it out of the freezer and let it thaw out. So that's the best way that I've found to actually store all of my sourdough breads and tortillas or anything that I've made. And you can actually double this recipe and freeze one for later. So just double all the ingredients, the rising time, all that's the same. You're just gonna wanna split that dough in half after the first rise and put it into two separate bread pans. Right now, my kitchen, uh, it's the summertime, so my kitchen stays about 72 degrees and my starter's pretty mature. I mean, I've had it for you know at least six or eight years, something like that. So it's very active, even when it's not fed, it's still active. And so that does make a difference when you're trying to figure out how long to let your bread rise, or I'm sorry, your dough rise. So uh, again, my kitchen's 72 degrees, and it took from the time that I mixed the dough to the time I shaped the dough was 10 hours. So if your kitchen is cooler than that, it might take a little bit longer. And if it's warmer than 72 degrees, it will be shorter. Again, that depends on how mature your starter is. So the best thing to do is just keep an eye on the dough and use that little trick that I have with, um, you know, putting a little small amount into the jar with a rubber band so you can actually see how much the dough has risen. It just gives you a much better visual, especially when you're first starting and just you know, look for it to double in size and then you'll know that it's ready to go ahead and shape. I'm really excited for you guys to try this recipe because I know that you're gonna love it. It's really like probably one of the easiest sourdough recipes that I have yet. And I know I say they're all easy because they are, but if you are looking for really easy sourdough sandwich bread, this is the one that you really need to try. If you aren't subscribed, would you please hit that subscribe button with the notification bell and that way when I put out new recipe videos you will get notified and you won't miss anything. There is the um, link for the recipe in the description box below so you can click on that to get more details in the written blog post 
But until next time, I really hope that you enjoy this. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.